In this video, we're going to graph quadratics uh, in vertex forms. We're going to convert them to vertex form first and then graph them. And so what we're going to do to convert this first quadratic into vertex form is we're going to do a process called completing the square. And so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to rewrite it thusly. I'm going to keep my minus 1 outside the parentheses. I haven't really changed the value of anything. And then there's a couple different ways to complete the square, but I prefer to, if, if there's a leading coefficient right here, I like to factor that out first. So if I factor out that 2, that leaves me with x squared plus 4x. And then I still have my minus 1 over here. And so now I'm going to complete the square. I'm going to figure out what number here would make this a perfect square trinomial. And so when I look at it, I take 4 and I divide it by 2 to get 2. And then I square the 2 to give me a 4. So I just introduced a 4 into my function. And so we're going to have to subtract a 4 elsewhere so we don't change the value of our function. So if I add 4 and subtract 4, it's basically just adding a 0. Now here's where you got to be careful though. It looks like I added a 4, but really I added 2 times 4. Because of my coefficient out in front, this 2, I really added an 8. So if I add 8 there, I'm going to have to subtract 8 out here to kind of zero it out. So let's copy what we have so far. I have 2 times x squared plus 4x plus 4. And then outside my parentheses, I have a minus 9 because those two, when I combine them, would become minus 9. Last step is I've written this inside the parentheses as a perfect square trinomial. And because I've done that, I can rewrite it as some value squared. Okay, I'm not going to go into a whole lot of detail in this video about how we get from there to there, but basically your shortcut is if you take this b value and you have it, that's what's going to go right there because 4 divided by 2 is 2. So here's our function. I've really just rewritten that given function up here in vertex form. And now that we're in vertex form, it's pretty easy to graph. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at what each of these numbers do. This one goes to the left two units. This value goes down nine units. And this value over here does a vertical stretch. Meaning our parabola is going to be, it's going to look twice as skinny, twice as tall and skinny as the parent function. So in order to graph these, I always like to start with our parent. So if I kind of have this going on, I've got our parent function just for comparison. And then I'll graph our new function in red. So what we've done is we've shifted to the left 2 and down 9. So let's figure out what our new vertex is. We go to the left 2 and down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So here's my new vertex. And so I would normally graph it kind of the same way. Oops. The same way as the quadratic parent. But because it's leading coefficient of 2, we're going to make it vertically stretched. So instead of those points, all of those points are going to be um, vertically stretched. It's going to be twice as high. So that's shifted up twice as far. This 4 will go up to 8 units above. And then I can erase the old points. And so now your parabola will kind of have this, this like taller, skinnier look than the parent. So here is our function right here in red. Let's do one more example. So I included one here that's got a little bit uh, nastier fractions if you want to look at one with fractions. But we're going to do it using the same process as we did before. So I'm going to start by kind of copying everything down. We have negative 3x squared minus 2x. And then I've got my plus 1 out here. We're eventually going to add some number there to complete the square. But what I like to do is I like to factor out whatever this number is. Since we've got that leading coefficient of negative 3, I'm going to kind of factor that out in front of my parentheses leave me with x squared, and if I take this negative 2 and divide it by negative 3, I'm going to get a positive 2 thirds x. And now we're going to look for that number that completes the square in here. And here's where it gets a little tricky with our fractions. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take half of my b value, which is 1 third, and I'm going to square it, which really adds 1 ninth to complete the square. But we got to zero it out. I have to subtract 1 ninth outside the parentheses so that I'm basically adding a zero. But where you got to be careful is this isn't really adding a 1 ninth. This is adding a negative 3 times 1 ninth. So if I come over here to the side and do some aside work, we know that that, um, that negative 3 
times one ninth is really negative three ninths, or in other words, negative one third. This is the number that we actually added whenever we put it right here. So if I, this is really a negative one third in disguise. So if I have a negative one third there, I've got to zero it out with a positive one third. Okay? Now let's see what we got next. What's our next step? So I have negative three parentheses, and I've got my what is now perfect square trinomial right here. One plus one third. Well, that's really um, three thirds plus one third. If I rewrote that one with a common denominator, so what that number really is, it's a four thirds. Okay, so this becomes four thirds. And then let's just rewrite this as a perfect square. So negative 3. Our shortcut to writing it is it's just going to be half of this b value. If that's a 2 thirds, then what goes in parentheses is our 1 third. And then don't forget, we still have our 4 thirds over here. So let's, let's analyze each of these numbers. Let's uh, look at see, see what our a value does. Let's see what our h value does. And let's see what our k value does. So our a value, okay, that's going to cause a vertical stretch, because that 3 is going to stretch it. And, since it's a negative, it's going to reflect it. Okay? This 1 third means 1 third, which is going to be hard to graph, units left, to the left. And this is going to mean, once again, hard to graph, 4 thirds units up. Okay, so this one's going to be a little bit gross, but let's let's play with it and see what happens. So I'm going to start by putting my parent function here. Okay, and that's going to be like our basis for comparison. That's our quadratic parent function. Now, I'll graph my new one. I guess I've already used all my colors, but let's go with red. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shift it one-third of a unit left, so not all the way to one left, but one-third of a unit left, and four-thirds of a unit up, okay? That's going to put us right about there if we're ballparking it visually. That's my new vertex. Now, without being too detailed, because of the negative, this is going to flip. So our parabola will now open downwards, and it's also going to be three times as um, stretched as the parent. So um, with all these fractions, it could be hard to graph, so I'm just going to be very loose in how I draw this, but it's going to be something like that. I'm not going to be super detailed because you're getting into some really weird fraction calculations and all I care about personally is that you know how this new function looks compared to the parent. So as long as you know it's three times skinnier, I don't care if you have those points perfectly graphed.